So we're back and we're working on question 13. So I have Sebastian, you're up. Yeah. So what do you think? Um, I got 18.833. 18.833. You want to put it in the chat? Just so everybody can see it. Okay. 18.833. So, um, so, Ricardo, you were working on it too. Do you agree with Sebastian? Uh, I got something different. You you, you want to tell us what you got? I got a thousand sixty four point zero eight. A thousand sixty four point zero eight. That's quite a quite a big difference. So so um, let's so you go ahead and put it in the chat just so everybody can see what your answer is. Oh okay. Wait a minute. Yeah, he did <laughs> so, for Q. Yeah. So Sebastian, you you just have Q. You don't have total surplus. Yeah, I wasn't sure how to do it. So uh, what I did is uh, I said it equal. I said the equations equal to each other for Q. Yeah. So then you get Q. But is Q total surplus? Uh, I thought so, but I guess not. Well, okay then. Um, so there are a couple of lectures actually I assigned you guys on YouTube to watch, and they're review lectures, and they'll they'll talk about total surplus. Um, but, but Ricardo, why don't you tell us what your definition of total surplus is? Um, um, it's the addition of the consumer surplus and the producer surplus. Okay. Now, now, do you remember me saying in lecture, like at the beginning of lecture a couple weeks ago, that that's an imperfect definition of total surplus? Do you remember me saying that? Um, not really. Well, okay. Guess what? I'm yeah. telling you now <laughs> that, that, that remembering TS is equal to CS plus PS, which is what you're saying, um, is only a first level analysis. And, th and that's actually like, it, it would work in most cases in principles. But there are a lot of cases you're going to see um, in this course, though I would have to say that, that, that defining total surplus this way, um, you'll still be able to answer a lot of questions. But as we get a little bit deeper into the material, there'll be lots of questions you can't answer with that definition. So be on guard. OK, Ricardo? Are you, are you there? Yeah. I'm here. It's okay. So you've been warned, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But what is true, we said, is net social benefit is always equal to total surplus. And, you know, the calculations are similar. But in this case, it's our, like one of our simple first cases. So the definition that you used, Ricardo, will work. Um, so... Um, let's go ahead and, and, and talk about what calculation you did. Well, yeah, I did what um, he did to Sebastian. I set them equal to each other to get the equilibrium. Equilibrium quantity, right? And, and then I did a area of a triangle or under the curve and over the curve. Okay, yeah. So, so um, did you draw a picture? I did, but I don't have a camera on my desktop right now. Yeah. Okay. Did anybody else um, um, get the same answer as Ricardo? We're not having. Uh, if 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 you guys agree with Ricardo, say yeah with an answer. Anybody? My answer varied slightly, but I used the same method. Okay, so Derek, you used the same, the same method. 
Okay. So uh, did you draw a picture, Eric? Derek, sorry. Did I draw a picture? Did you draw a picture? Yeah, I have a small one. I can see if it'll show up on the camera. Hold on. Okay. I don't even know where the camera is on my... Because uh, cause I'll tell you... Oh, oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I see your little picture. Can you bring it a little bit closer to the camera? Do you guys see what Derek did? Um, it's the It's the area underneath the demand curve, above the supply curve, <clears throat> and to the left of the equilibrium quantity is that triangle there. So, so, so you would use this vertical intercept, 116 minus three to get the base of that triangle. And then the um, altitude of the triangle, like from that base to the vertex, um, is going to be the distance that's represented by the quantity at the equilibrium point, right? So, 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 Ricardo, you want to um, show us a little bit of your calculation? The text box? Yeah, just put it in the chat. Okay, for like from the beginning. Yeah, I mean, it it should be pretty straightforward, right? Total yeah. surplus is equal to blah 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 blah. Okay, so Sebastian, are you still there? While we're waiting for Ricardo to put it in the chat? Yeah. So do you see where you kind of went wrong? Yeah, I, I totally forgot about the second step. Well, yeah, I mean, honestly, you really want to differentiate between which of these concepts are referring to areas and which ones are referring to points. You know, the equilibrium quantity is a point. Um, at your, or actually it's the coordinate of a point, which is the equilibrium point on the horizontal axis. And the coordinate that's associated with that point on the vertical axis is the equilibrium price. So you're talking about a point and we're talking about areas. So, so okay. Um, so, so Ricardo, so he did this like in a couple of different steps, it looks like. So he found the equilibrium quantity and he found the equilibrium price and that's fine. And then he has area, yeah. So, um, <clears throat> oh, I think you meant like, if you're gonna use the same equilibrium quantity using fractions, you have 113. So it should be like 113 divided by six, right? in your line with area, Ricardo? Yeah, the, it was 113 over 16. 116. Okay. 116 minus three. Yeah. 111, yeah, well, so, so, so the 116 minus three is the base, and the only thing that, um, do you wanna amend that for us just so it's written properly? I'm assuming your calculation is, is right. But let's go ahead and look. Right. So, so, so here we have it really, really close. And for the purposes on ignith ignithium, um, this should be close enough within rounding error. Um, so I would say good job, Ricardo. Ricardo, you just want to do the one thing and amend your line for area with the one half is equal to 116 minus three and make sure that's, uh, 113 instead. Oh, yeah. I didn't see that. Yeah, because it's not 111, it's 113. So.
So, so uh, Derek, you good? Yeah, that's I got that's the answer I got. Well, I got I didn't round it to point nine. I round I did it to the uh, second decimal point. But yeah, decimal. yeah, 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 yeah. So you should you should you should be fine. Yeah. Um, and just to let you guys know, um, Ignithium gives you a couple of percentage points of rounding error. And if you guys play around with this, you'll see um, that as long as you've not been, as long as you've been running everything to two decimal places, you should be fine. But if the numbers in question are small numbers, occasionally, and this is gonna be up to your discernment, you guys um, have to, you know, practice with the system and you kind of get the feedback and you get used to it. Again, the people that do really well in this class do a lot of practice. So if you're not doing a lot of practice, then, you know, you're rolling the dice and hey, it's your, it's your grade <laughs> and you can roll the dice as much as you want to. But um, <clears throat> if the numbers are, this is like the rule of thumb, if the numbers in question are less than two, right? So if it's a number like one and a half or a number like a half that comes up on the screen, which, you know, I would say of all the problems we do because they're randomly generated, you only have to worry if you see a number on the screen that's less than two, then, you know, start to have your antenna up and be on alert. Because at that point in time, I would recommend that you round to four decimal places. Um, because if you think about it, a percentage error on a small number, like the number one, right? That's, that's like 0 0.02 or 0 0.03 off of one. So that's really, you know, it, it's easy to get outside the error bounds when you're working with small numbers. So be careful. Here, the numbers are relatively large. So as long as you do the two decimal places, you shouldn't have any, any issues at all. Um, do you guys have any questions about that? No. Okay, if you have a question, just put you know question in chat and I'll call on you. So let's see. Um, let's do um, number 15 first. And so you hear now, Miriam, back with us? Yeah. Okay, so you can be in charge of getting us started for number 15. And um, uh, how about Stephen Doe? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, so let's, <clears throat> you, can, you, can, you can help with number 15 too. So I'll give you guys um, a few more minutes. And um, so go ahead and get started on it. One of the things that um, while we're, well, actually, I'll wait. Is it 14 or 15? 15. We're 15. skipping okay. from 13 to 15. Okay. Thank you. Um, and, okay. I'll give you guys just a minute. So, <clears throat> uh, Stephen, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Are, are you ready? Uh, yeah. Okay. I, my answer is 1,051.9. 1,051.9. You want to put that in the chat? So everybody can see 1,051.9. And, and what about you, Miriam? Um, you wanna did you did you get an answer? What's that? I set them equal to each other and I got Q. Okay. And then I use the this part is where I'm struggling. Okay. Well, let's just walk through this. Like question 15 says let's call it Q star. That's the Q you got. That's the equilibrium quantity, right? Yeah. And what did you get? 
18.83. Okay, and is that what we had before? Because it's 113 divided by six? Because it should be the same equilibrium quantity, right? These are the same equations that we had in 13. Because I never, I never, I, yeah. I didn't. Okay. So, so, and then it's two less than that. Oh, that's where I did it wrong. Well, you got to read the question, right? Yeah. <laughs> if you don't read the question, ah, ain't going to work. Did you draw a picture? Yeah. Okay. So, so, um, uh, you want to show us your picture? Yeah. Give me a second. Or I guess we should say it's an illustration, right? Picture illustration. Picture kind of implies that it's like more accurate, a little bit like a graph. Okay, can you push it up a little bit to the camera? Yeah, so you have the, the same sort of thing, right? But remember, your what point are we talking about versus the point that you were talking about? Can you can you focus on that? Wait, that right. point? Yeah, yeah. So so right. We said Q star. Can you put Q star on the graph? Is your one eighteen? I mean, is your eighteen point eighty three? I guess. Would it be in the center? <laughs> well, I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> Right, uh, right, because these are points on the graph, right? You have an equilibrium point. Equilibrium point has two coordinates, right? Their x coordinate and the y coordinate. Um, Will it be right here? Uh, well, yeah. This, that's the equilibrium point, but where's eighteen point eighty three? Point eighty three. Mm. Maybe towards this region. Let me see. Uh, well, 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 yeah. So, so um, let's let's just be clear, okay? And I'll I'll do a, a little screen share because just in case, so I'm gonna stop sharing this and I'm gonna. Um, share a whiteboard because this is like absolutely like critical because you're not even get to first base if you don't make sure you you know get this part right on a regular graph I'll just say this is like you know ninth grade or eighth grade I don't know right here's a little point oh can you see my point on my graph? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And there's this is the x axis and there's the y axis, right? And I'm going to So so this point ha is uh what they call an ordered pair. There's some x value, and I'll just call it x zero, and some y value y zero. Okay, that defines that point, right? Yeah. That's that's x zero y zero. Now, where do we find this x value, right? Well. It should correspond to the value on the horizontal axis, right? So, for example, if x is zero is equal to eighteen point eight three, then this value here on the horizontal axis that corresponds to the location of that point should be 18.83, right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And 
And so in our case, X is what? It's not X, we call it another name because in applied math, right? Like in regular math, you just talk about X and Y, they could be anything. But here, X stands for something, so we use that instead. And do you know what we use? Come on. No. <laughs> no, no. Well, we call it we call it the quantity of the good, right? So instead of using X, I'm gonna erase X. Instead of using X, we use Q. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. For quantity, right? Yeah. And in our case, this value, eighteen point eighty three. I think that's what you said, right? Yeah. That corresponds to what quantity? The, the quantity traded in equilibrium, right? Okay, yes. Yeah. Right, because people can trade any quantity of the good, you know, I mean, if you, if you connect this up with, you know, like real world, you know, the, you know, how much of, how much quantity of, you know, one of my favorite beers is Negra Modelo, right? Mm -hmm. So how much Negro Modelo, Negra Modelo is, is um, um, bought and sold in one day in Orange County where I live? Well, it could be, you know, 10,000 six packs, or it could be 8,000 six packs. But if we're measuring demand and supply for one day, whatever amount is purchased by consumers is also sold by the people that sell it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the equilibrium value. If it turns out that let's say 8,556 are bought and sold, that's our equilibrium for the day. Um, so in this problem, 18.83 is the quantity that is sold by producers and purchased by consumers for this particular good. We don't know what the good is, you know. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so on your graph, that point where they cross that you calculated is 18.83, but we're not asking about that point, right? We're asking about some other point, some other quantity and what's the quantity we're asking about uh, is it the 16.83 yeah it's two less than that right yeah so 16.83 and so on um your graph right it's not um so here i'll just go ahead and put in a demand curve and I'll put in a supply curve. So we're not talking about that point. We're talking about some other point here. So remember our total surplus is the area between the demand and supply curves up to the quantity that's traded. And in our case, it's gonna look like a trapezoid because um, we're just talking about, and I'll use yellow. Um, we're just talking about this area here. So is that what you calculated, Stephen? Yeah, I did the difference of that area and that area as well. Well, okay. So, so, so I, I, I want to tell you, it should be fine. 
Um, and a lot of students are kind of resistant to this. So I'm, you know, telling you, these are tips to help you out as you practice. But if you, if you end up um, like with rounding error that's significant, um, a lot of times it's because you in, every time you like calculate one thing and then calculate another and then take the difference, you can introduce like more rounding error. But um, so you should try the calculation different ways and and see like what minimizes your error. So in this case, I don't know if you end up with significant error or not, but we're only talking about um, two, a two unit difference. So that's where like maybe I would be a little bit concerned that, um, you know, the, the numbers could be small enough that it, that it might matter. But remember, um, for, for the trapezoid area, the trapezoid area, the formula is B1 plus B2 divided by 2. And I'll put all of that in parentheses. Well, actually, I'll use a square bracket just to be clear times the, and I'm gonna use height, right? But remember, the height here is just the distance between the two bases. In our case, it's just gonna be the 16.83. But if the bases were moved over, it's just that distance between the bases is the height. So um, the reason why I say height, I mean, a better, a better, a better word, a lot of times it's used altitude um, as the distance between the bases as being, you know, a, a better term because a lot of times people think height is going to be vertical distance, but here it's just the distance between the two bases. So um, I'll put, uh, hopefully you guys can see my yellow arrow there. I don't know if I can change the color. Do another one. That distance there in green. Okay, so so um, let's go ahead and go back to the problem, and I'll share the screen here. And and. Um, so, so uh, Stephen, you said you got, and let me go ahead and hear. Let's see. And that's pretty close. Yeah. So, so I think Ignithium would score you correctly on that. So it's not, nothing to be concerned about. These numbers are, are big enough. But um, yeah, I mean, for me, I would done the B1 plus the B2, and hopefully you guys can see those two distances. And then I would have taken, added those together, divided by two, and then multiplied by the height um, of the trapezoid to get it. Okay, so um, we're getting close to 8.30, and so I'll go ahead and, and close it off there. I just wanna um, remind you guys that, um, so, Question uh, 14 is asking for two more um, than the equilibrium. And if you do that, so I'll stop this share and I will um, share my whiteboard again. And so in, in that case, you might kind of wonder, mm, you know, how exactly do I calculate that? Because remember, um, over here, right, um, and this is going to be negative total surplus, right? So um, 
then it becomes less clear about what to do. And the way to do it um, clearly is to draw two graphs. And let me try to get back to my blue formatting. Draw one graph. Oh, okay. just for demand. So there's demand. And then remember, we're gonna cut the demand off at some quantity. In this particular case, because we know Q star was at 18.83, it's gonna be two more. So it's gonna be at 20.83. And then um, then what you're doing is you're calculating this area here, which is a trapezoid also. It's just what you call a right trapezoid. See, there's base one, base two, and then there's the distance between the bases, which is the height. And <clears throat> you're ultimately going to be using this um, equation because net social benefit is equal to total surplus, okay, by definition. But net social benefit is equal to total social benefit minus total social cost. And the area underneath the demand curve is the total social benefit. So, uh, that's that area there. And then your second graph should be just for the supply curve up to the same point. So again, in our example, that's 20.83. And let's just make this one green. And we're talking about this area here. And this is our total social cost. Okay. So can everybody see that? Are you guys gonna give me thumb, thumbs up? Looks great. There's a, something in the chat. Oh, 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 okay. You guys are like, okay, like, I, so you guys can ask me a question. I can't always see the chat, so you might have to unmute it, and I can, I can tell you, right? But here, so you can see the one base, but this base, right, you have to take 16.83, and you've got a plug it into um, the supply curve right, right. to get the height of the supply curve. And then you have to plug it into the demand curve to get the height of the demand curve. And, diff the difference. and then take the difference between those. Yeah. I see it now. Yeah. And so that's why I'm saying, you know, honestly, you guys, the stuff is not hard, but it's, it's, you know, if you're not used to like, kind of like, following a list and being like slow and careful and to be really honest about it um, probably 85% um, of being a good economist 
is slowing down and being careful when other people want to rush. <laughs> We're, 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 we're the, the, you know, sober people in the room when people are talking about things like how much, you know, should the federal government spend on road construction and they're like yelling and everything like that. And then we're like, wait, wait a minute. You know, we can calculate this. We can look at what we can estimate the benefits and we can estimate the costs and we can make sure that the benefits of the proposed roadway are going to exceed its costs. Let's do some calculations and figure this out. So, so even though, I mean, these are the tools of the trade that you guys are learning right now, um, you might also notice that, you know, the, the habit of, of using those tools requires, you know, careful, deliberative, um, thinking um if if you're if you're too fast you normally make errors and you skip steps and you don't document your calculations because at the end of the day if if you're the person in the room saying i got the answer then people want to know okay show us what you did and how did you do it and what does it mean and so if you really want to be effective, you should start today. You know, if you haven't already started, just slow it down and, and you know, put all the pieces together. I hope that's helpful. It's just, uh, you know, the way that it, it, it is. Um, so does anybody have any questions about um, what we're doing? And obviously in this case, in order to find the base, you have to do the same thing. You have to, um, take the, the, the value here and, you know, the domain of the function, and then you have to find its value in the range of the function, um, make that calculation. Okay. Um, so, so can you guys do me a, a favor and just say, got it in chat. So I know that everybody understood what we we're talking about. If you guys, any uh, question, questions? I thought I heard somebody's mic for a minute. Okay. Do we have another practice set of problems due Tuesday for? Um... Yeah, you know, actually, so so um, I was gonna um, uh, post that like today, but you guys should be finished um, with. I mean. I don't know if you already printed out your version and you did that, but you guys should, I, we've gone through just about everything on this particular assignment. Um, obviously you haven't done every single question, but I think you guys have enough information that you have a chance, a, a good chance of, uh, of doing it um, correctly. So yeah, I, I was thinking about posting it, um, saying that it was due on, on Tuesday. Um, but I, I might make it Thursday instead. But you guys should be done with it because once we're done, we'll move on. And if you guys have a question, we could go back and we could ask, but um, you'll see it on uh, on an exam. I'll call it, you know, it, the, the modern term for exam is assessment. But um, the, these questions are coming to an assessment in the near future. <laughs> so, so, so there's the dead weight loss indicated and it's just the change in that social benefit. So um, 